The logs in the center look far more burnt compared to the rest. Almost looks like they were used in conjunction with some kind of accelerant. Did you recently burn something there? It's our fireplace. We're free to use it as we please. You're dang right I burned something in the fireplace. It's an effing fireplace. I see traces of resin. Which leads me to believe you burned up some sort of toxic substance. It doesn't matter what kind of fireplace you have. Burning anything other than firewood in it is dangerous. Next time, don't burn it up at home. Dispose of it like you would any other non-burnable refuse. So that we can look through it in your trash. Especially if it was something like a smartphone or a USB memory stick. <laughs> non-burnable refuse like a smartphone? Let's be serious here, Belle. That's exactly the sort of data one needs to thoroughly emulate. Remember what you learned at Quantico. Oh, it's pumped back there, all right. By the way, you're still searching for Patricia, yes? You don't need to worry about that. Shut up. We're investigating. Sh shut up, shut up, shut up. In fact, we've almost reached our goal. We just need to find some conclusive evidence. I love that it was like, you're still looking, aren't you? You don't need to worry about that. And also, yes, we're still looking. We're close, but we're still looking. Oh, I sincerely hope that's the case. Hard to believe, though. After all, so far you've just been barking up the wrong tree. Barking up the wrong tree. That's right. You shouldn't be wasting time here. You should be out there, looking for her. Then I'll just ask you straight away. Do you know where she is? No. We don't. But we can feel her, when we close our eyes, and become one with the world. It's very faint, but we can see her. We can see Patricia. Are you trying to distract me again? Or do you really expect me to believe you're clairvoyant or something? <laughs> what do you think we are, X-Men? It's metaphysical offender profiling. Nothing like that. He Professor actually X. asked me where Patricia is? And does he have full confidence that we'll never find her? Fine. I can deal with that. I'll just ask him everything I can about the Lucare case. Lucare case was. Professor R was a Clarkson, and also the mother of Saint Rouge. Okay. By the way, how did the FBI find Lisa's body after 14 whole years? That's none of your business. Are you saying they but just happened know. to be investigating the Clarkson's cold storage warehouse? Because the fact that they found chance. the body again has to tie into the 10-foot giant rather than the there killer. Some undercover terrorism plot at foot there. I said it's none of your business. Well, then we'll just have to guess. It was an anonymous tip. A tip related to Saint Rouge. Did we hit the nail on the head, Bell? <laughs> but that's not what we want to know about. After all, the FBI gets hundreds of tips every day. Right, my fairy? It was always that way. Even back when we were on duty. Here's what we really want to know. Why, out of all those tips, did you select that one? Would you tell us that much? Well, what urged you to make a beeline straight for this case? That's... None of your business. Yeah, let's take a look at that milk Loaf carton that wall. D milk cartons. Why are they all lined up so neatly? This square area enclosed by milk cartons. Is it another sanctuary? The more I look around, the more I feel like there's some sort of system to all this. 
the sanctuary on this table. The fireplace sanctuary. And the milk carton sanctuary. They all lead into the room back there. And there's one more by the window, and yet another by my feet. Are they signs? Or is this all some sort of path? Hey, Belle. Is that a serious hey, question? Belle. Why don't you shut the fuck up about those sanctuaries? Of I told you to is. leave it alone. <laughs> We're drying them out. We line the milk cartons up to dry them out so we can turn them into Halloween decorations. Halloween? It's only January. This is America, <laughs> land of the free. Got a problem with that? All right. Second. If Professor R really was the mastermind behind everything, if she wanted to rebuild the Clarkson's legacy, then why did she feel the need to kill everyone? Let's ask about it. So you think Galena was murdered by Helena Doman, her own brother? Sister. No, not her. Galena was someone else. Then who killed her? It's written in the report, isn't it? Yes. I want to hear but it from I'm you. But I'm asking you. Would you mind Can't answering tell the players me in all your that own much. words? You see, I find your entire story highly suspicious. It's a complicated matter. Extremely complicated. Don't let him draw you into his game. Stay calm, Aaliyah Davis. I guess let's look at pondering Aaliyah. Am I winning here or... No. I need to stay positive. I have to solve this case no matter what it takes. I can't lose courage here. Let's inspect pondering Aaliyah. The future influences the present just as much as the past. You asked me why I spent an entire two days observing you before I came to speak with you. Well, here's why. Over those 49 hours, I observed the intervals between your actions. When you were neither doing something nor doing nothing. I intently studied your intervals between action to action and action to inaction to action. That line about when you are doing neither something nor nothing, there's something really cool about that line. People reveal everything during the intervals between their actions. For example, when you eat alone versus eating with someone else. I wonder if Zack was uh, catching up on Tangled the series on Disney Plus, because that's literally all I've been up to on my lunch breaks. The most breaks. prominent differences always appear when someone either begins or finishes eating a meal. Tangle the series is actually really well written, and you should check it out if you are interested in just watching a nice, relaxing kid show that also has a good overarching plot and fun characters. And since these are unconscious Anyways, actions, back to the game. they can't be consciously hidden. When you prepare to eat or finish eating, when you move in to clean up, when you pick up a book or close one, when you raise a cup of coffee to your lips. Human actions speak volumes. Not even the person doing the actions is conscious of them. That's what lies in those intervals. That's my modus operandi. And here's the conclusion it helped me reach. I don't think in real life you can really tell a lot about a person from those sorts of actions, but in this video game world, that's effing rad. There's one other person in this house, isn't there? <laughs> You're incredible, Belle. You outdid all our expectations. Impressive, to say the least. You're right, Belle. But only half right. And only half of a person lives here. It just pans over and it's Darth Maul sitting on the sofa. Half. You should still be proud, though. Honestly, we never thought you'd make it this far. You've got real talent. <laughs> Most of what you say is... D 
if this goes uh, to court, I won't let you claim line. that your testimony is inadmissible just because of your little indulgence there. Fine by us. We can even put it in writing if you want. We won't run or hide. Will we, my fair? Most of the paper. I'm gonna head it around here somewhere. Where, where is it? Mm. Mm. <sighs> that was a very quiet mug I'm drop. Fine. Hey, everything okay? Shut up, What's Simon. going on out here? Oh, don't tell me. He's just suffering from nausea. I was more worried about you. You were in there for quite some time. Yeah, sorry. Ever since you got here, I've been all backed up. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, can you stand? Is this a sign of the coffee? What could it be? Oh, shoot. The, the coffee's still coffee. giving him messages. I think. Is that a dragonfly? Footsteps. Big footsteps. That's great that they're bringing the coffee thing back. I love that. Footsteps. Big footsteps. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. That poor girl, Lace. She was a druggie. And she was into the really bad stuff. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess, mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. You okay? Hey. Hmm, well, I was just thinking about drugs. We're fine. Just feeling a little tired. Would you take us to get our medicine? Uh, sure. It's in the bathroom, right? <sighs> Seems like he's calmed down a little. We should let him rest for a while. One more step and I could have cornered Morgan, but so be it. Heaven Simon ruining everything. I can still keep investigating even if the owner of this chair isn't present. Simon Jones, what a piece of work. How can anyone have such bad timing? We can take a look at Pondering Simon. A mess of pizza box. Let's take I a look wonder at what sort of food he was eating all shut up in here. Pizza? Why do they all love pizza so much? <laughs> White boys and their pizza. What's wrong, Aaliyah? You hungry or something? Excuse me? What are you insinuating? Well, you're staring right at an empty pizza box. Please don't compare yourself to me. Man, I actually could go for some pizza right now. She's absolutely right, White boys and their pizza. Besides, I have a refined palate. Hey! That was uncalled for. No, it wasn't. Pizza is a sacred food, remember? You don't need to feel embarrassed for being unable to stop staring at it. It enthralls all who gaze upon it. That's the power of pizza. Stop, Agent Jones. I've had enough of this sacred pizza bit. Is there anything more to your character than the pizza thing? I'm sick of you Chicagoans and your... <laughs> of course he's from Chicago! Of course he is! Pizza, pizza, pizza. 24 hours a day. That's all you want to That being said, if he was about. a real Chicagoan, he would constantly be complaining about how the pizza in any other city isn't, quote, real po uh, pizza. D uh, what's next? You gonna launch into a tirade about how deep dish is yeah. the only proper way yeah, to Yeah, if he's pizza? a real Chicagoan, he would be. No, 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 Ali. I'm not a real Chicagoan, but a real Chicagoan would say that. You just don't get it, do you? As a Chicagoan, I'm proud of the deep dish pizza. But get this. 
I love New York style pizza. Yeah, that'll too. get you beaten up if you say that in Chicago. It doesn't matter what kind of pizza it is, as long as it's a pizza, it's beautiful. That's not true. There is bad pizza. There is lots of bad pizza out there. What? Still don't get it? Okay, here. I'm gonna put it in terms that I'm sure even you could understand. All pizzas. And then there are really? some pizzas that are good food, but they're not good pizza. You know? Like, if your pizza gets cut into squares, it still probably tastes good. It's still probably a good food, but that's not good pizza. If I, if, I am, if I have a hankering for pizza, I'm never going to order from a place that cuts its pizza into squares. You know what I'm saying? Get your heart out, Michi. That's not real pizza. Or it is real. It's, Just it's barely it real anything. pizza. It's still good food, but it's not... It's not... You know, you know what I'm saying. You, everyone agrees with me. People have been saying... Agent Jones has been acting strange the entire time we've been here. He told me he wasn't very good at dealing with suspects in person, but can anyone be this bad at it? Is he hiding something? Or maybe our suspect found some dirt on him. Either way, I wish he'd stop trying to drag me down with him. Let me get one thing straight. You started this investigation based on an anonymous tip, right? What kind of a tip was it? Phone or mail? What does that matter at this point? This may surprise you, but these kinds of details really eat me up inside. I always get hung up on the most insignificant of details, especially during the most vital times. For example, uh... Okay, if you're admitting that the detail's insignificant, then why are you, like, you being know how so... You people go to bed early the night before they have a big job? Why are you doing it? That's exactly the time where I start focusing on, on, on meaningless nonsense. Hmm. When did I last clip my nails? Okay, easy there, Kira. How long is my milk good for? I just can't help myself. I can't resist the need to know. It's just the way I am. It was sent in an envelope. Postmarked December 28th, sent out from Louisiana. What did it have inside? A postcard with a dragonfly on it. A wrapped sample of Saint Rouge and a note. What did it say? Gold. Investigate the Clarksons. F.K. <sighs> so, okay. Okay, because of the way Swery works, there is a forest casing in spy fiction, there's a forest casing in D4, there's a forest casing in The Missing, I think. And they're all different iterations. They're not all evil demons like the one from the other Premonition 1. But the fact that there's an FK sending letters in Deadly Premonition 2... I don't want Kaysen to be alive. I'm okay if Willie is still around and doing things, but I don't know if I ever actually said this. Swery, like, said offhandedly in an interview that uh, Willie is actually the one... He's, like, Kaysen's handler, and Willie is actually the... Um, even more in charge. Although, I think even he hinted that Willie wasn't the big, big bad. There was something even bigger behind that. But, like... Kaysen should be dead in 2019. I don't want the Kaysen from Deadly Premonition 1 to come back. That's it? Now, if it turned out to be the Forest Kaysen from D4, that would be fantastic. I would love that. Yes, that's it. Who's FK? Anonymous tip, remember? It's obviously just a It also could just be a did different you FK. That? Of course I did. Louisiana has a population of... Oh, yeah, and Zach specifically said that he didn't mention Kaysen at all in the file, so they wouldn't know who that the is. The FBI database has a list of 6,682 individuals whose initials are FK. One out of every six individuals is a child under the age of 14, born after 2005. The remaining 5,500 people include those whose initials changed after they married or incarcerated individuals. After subtracting those, I was left at 3,800. That's when I stopped searching for FK, and I decided to change up my approach. It isn't important where the tip came from. All that matters is solving the case. I got this far by taking the most efficient route possible. Are you satisfied now? Yeah. Thanks. I feel a lot better now. Yep, it all checks out. I don't like that he said it all checks out. That's Whatever weird. his goal may be, Morgan's gone to great lengths to survive. 
But no matter how hard he tries, the heartless monster inside of him will just keep devouring his body. When Katrina stole my family from me, I lost all hope. I wanted to die. That's inch I haven't thought about that. Katrina was 05, wasn't it? Let me check that real quick. 05 or 04, somewhere around there. And we're, and we're in Louisiana in 2005. Yeah, Katrina was 2000. Oh, I really hope Swery doesn't pull a... Uh, uh, um, I can't even think of a good example, but like saying that the events of Death of Pyramid Edition 2 are responsible for Katrina. If that's where this goes, I'm going to be really uncomfortable. Um, but that's interesting. What is he hoping for? But yeah, I hate it. It's especially for recent events. Why it's do you always think very he's trying to survive so badly? People are like, actually, this fictional what thing does he hope caused to the real world suffering. Like, remember when Grindelwald was like, "Hey, I am an allegory for Nazism," but also. I am claiming that I am motivated to stop the Holocaust, and by stopping me, you are letting the Holocaust happen. Man, Fantastic Beasts 2 was a bad movie. Anyways... What do you mean? He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Uh, no more Nietzsche. Please, just stop. I feel like my ears are gonna start bleeding. Hey, Agent Jones. Want to know why I love Nietzsche's quotes so much? Uh, sure. I just told you to stop, but okay, go ahead. I first discovered Nietzsche in a shelter after Katrina. At the time, I was shell-shocked, hopeless. I wanted to die. How could a 13-year-old girl go on living alone with her little brother? And then, in that shelter, I met a college professor. His school was damaged by the hurricane, too, and got closed down. He also lost his family, and was living there in the shelter, just like me. So we gradually started spending more time together. I'll never forget the three months I spent with him. He loved Nietzsche. And out of all of Nietzsche's quotes, there was one from Thus Spoke Zarathustra that he repeated over and over again. Better know nothing than half know many things. Better be a fool on one's own account than a sage on other people's approbation. I thought it was a strange quote to hear from a college professor, you know? Why would he think it would be good to be a fool? But I understand what he meant now. He was trying to encourage my little brother and I so that we'd be able to bear the weight of the victim label that was about to be slapped onto us so that we could go on respecting ourselves without ever succumbing to all the patronizers. After that, my grandmother in Lafayette took us in. And that was the last time I ever saw the professor. But whenever I quote Nietzsche, my memories of him come flowing back into my mind. And they give me the power I need to keep pressing on. So I'm going to keep quoting Nietzsche, just to make sure I don't forget my roots. Oh, I, uh... That's see. fascinating. Yeah, I think I get it now. That's, that was, that's an incredible, like, backstory Nietzsche reveal. Nietzsche to you. Shut what up. Pizza Shut to me. up about, it's, it's like The Office. Shut up about the sun. Shut up about pizza. Sorry for giving you a hard time about it. You are free to go on quoting him whenever you want, of course. I won't say another word. Agent Jones. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> How dare you compare Nietzsche with pizza? Oh, come on. The I the the like the idea of like that's su that's such good like character writing of like I'm just I'm just like so impressed that Swery is a Japanese writer who has visited the US a couple of times mostly just to see what things look like he likes to 
um, like see the lifestyle of people because he just finds that really interesting. And the idea that he would visit Louisiana and then say, okay, in the present day storyline in Boston, I am going to have a character who is a Katrina survivor and part of her backstory is coming to terms with how to continue respecting herself despite the fact that she was about to live the next like five to ten years of her life at least constantly being called a victim of Katrina. That is fascinating. That is, I, that is great. That, I, I, that is amazing. I hope we get more of that. But that little, like, story alone makes Aaliyah such a, like, cool character that I really want to keep learning more about. That's amazing. I didn't think he'd gotten this bad. I can't let him die on me yet. I need to get more clues out of him before his time runs out. God. Learning to respect yourself despite the label of victim I was about to be slapped with. That is such an interesting concept. I never would have thought to imbue with a, a imbue a character with. That is great. Because I'm sure that's a real life thing. I like I, 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 I don't know like Katrina victims personally, and obviously there's plenty of other things where people get are are just labeled as victim, and like I, I that's such that it, that is not exclusive to Katrina anyway. But I also don't know very many people who have dealt with that so directly. But exploring that mentality that I am positive is a very real thing. But that is not talked about in any fiction I've ever seen. That's the first time I've seen that sort of, like, life directly talked about in a character. I just, I really love that. I think that's really, really cool. I gave him his meds and let him rest. Let him rest where? In the bathtub. It happened to have a blanket and a pillow in it. What? But why? I don't know. Maybe he sleeps in the tub. I feel like I saw that once in some vampire movie. You actually saw that in the hit film Daredevil. I don't know what you're talking from about. From 2002? More importantly, how long has he been like that? Oh no, I'm sorry. He, it was a coffin that was filled with water. It wasn't a bathtub. My mistake. It's stage four cancer. He's had it for a while now. No. No. I'm talking about his face. It looks as white as a sheet. You can even see all his veins. I've never heard of any cancer side effect like that. Uh, who knows? Now that you mention it, he started going really crazy around the beginning of December. In what way? He changed pizza places. This better not be another joke. It's not, really. It's not. Before December, he always used to order delivery from a Chicago-style joint all the way up New Medford. But one day, he took one look at one of their trademarked red boxes and totally lost oh, it. Oh, so his red thing didn't really start kicking in until... Red, huh? December. You better believe it. He started screaming gibberish at the pizza boy and chased him away. Next thing I know, I see him toss the pizza box out his window. Do you think that's when his fear of red began surfacing more prominently? Beats me. I mean, there isn't a better Chicago-style pizza place that delivers around this area. How could someone give up on that just because they don't like the box? I don't get it. Were you serious for even a fraction of that story? Well, no, I think that the actually letter that was delivered to me the detail the about the red I think actually is important. A postcard decorated with a dragonfly. A mark of the Clarkson family. A single sheet of paper ordering me to investigate the Clarksons. And Oh, we got a lot to look at now. So many records. I guess it doesn't matter what kind of person you are. Everyone loves some kind of music. That's one of the reasons why music is so powerful. But 